The UN has expressed fears of a full-scale war as the deadly conflict between Israeli forces and Palestinians continues for a third day. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu warned Palestinian militants that this was just the beginning, threatening to strike with blows they haven't dreamed of. Tonight, President Biden said he had spoken to Mr Netanyahu and said he hoped the violence would end sooner rather than later. At least 65 Palestinians, including 15 children and six Israelis, are reported to have been killed since Monday. In the past few days, Palestinian militants have fired a mass barrage of rockets into Israel, including on Tel Aviv. And Israel has carried out a heavy bombardment of Gaza, launching hundreds of airstrikes. Tensions have been growing in Jerusalem, partly fueled by a long-running threat to evict Palestinians from their homes in East Jerusalem. It all came to a head on Friday at Al-Aqsa Mosque. The site where it stands is highly sensitive, sacred for both Muslims and Jews. Israeli police used CS gas and stun grenades at the mosque, and Palestinian youths threw rocks at them. Here's our Middle East correspondent, Tom Bateman. The world's asking if the region's on the brink of war. People who work to this feel it's already here. Palestinians in Gaza face the fiercest Israeli bombardment since the last all-out conflict. Israel says it's going after militant leaders. Some were killed in their homes. But civilians died in this strike, say Palestinian health officials. In Gaza, a territory under blockade, grief quickly turns to anger. Dozens have died here since the violence erupted on Monday, and they're still counting their dead. Rocket fire from Gaza has continued deep into Israel. And the sirens are near non-stop in towns close by. OK, that's an interception. Let's get in. Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. As we've heard, airstrikes pound the Gaza Strip just a couple of miles away throughout the course of this morning into the afternoon. More retaliation, more fire from Gaza. Under fire, Asher and his son Maor ran for the safe room. But their neighbour, an 89-year-old woman, didn't make it. She's seriously injured. Her carer died in the strike. There are growing international calls for restraint. But for now, it seems that no one here is listening. It is the intensity of these attacks that has led both sides to say they will step up their strikes in retaliation. A descent into much further violence seems inevitable. More rockets are shot down in Israel's skies. Tonight in a mixed Jewish-Arab town, I saw how fear and chaos is spreading. Violence between Jews and Arabs inside Israel is spiraling. Here, Jewish extremists attack an ambulance and then check a car to see if Arabs or Jews are inside. Along the coast, a popular Arab restaurant comes under attack. In another mixed town, a Jewish man is beaten by Arab Israelis. A synagogue has also been torched. Israel's leader calls it anarchy. A wave of anger that started in Jerusalem has spilled out to the occupied territories and into Israel itself. The country's engulfed in multiple flashpoints. It may be too late to contain it now. 
Despite a curfew being enforced in one of those towns, it seems to be largely ineffective tonight. And Israel's Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, has said that he is now considering sending in army troops to some of those areas ex experiencing those kinds of confrontations. As to the wider military conflict, as you were saying, Sophie, the US President Joe Biden says that his expectation and hope is it should end sooner rather than later, while also saying that he believes Israel has the right to defend itself. But with more airstrikes pounding the Gaza Strip in the last couple of hours and more rocket fire within that time, that certainly seems, from this perspective, a long way off. Our Middle East correspondent Tom Bateman in Jerusalem. Thank you. Well, let's talk to Rushdie Abu Alof, who's in Gaza City. And what's the situation there tonight? The sound of bombs and airstrikes are continuing uh, uh, shortly after midnight here in, uh, in Gaza. It's been the longest day of uh, fighting since years. Israel uh, hit hundreds of targets and Hamas, the militancy group, fired hundreds of, uh, of rockets. Uh, th th this uh, this uh, situation is uh, leaving this uh, place in a very uh, grim sort of, uh, uh, of picture. Uh, people are suffering from uh, uh, the sound of, of sonics, uh, the, so the sound of, uh, of bombing, a very angry and uh, shocking uh, mood to see the, the scale of destruction uh, around the uh, Gaza Strip after this uh, very long uh, day and very long night of, of fighting. And it doesn't seem the night is over yet. In the last five minutes, the Israeli uh, uh, airplanes have targeted a place in, in Khan Yunis. They are talking about uh, also casualties in the place and the latest uh, Health Ministry figure is talking about more than 60 people killed, half of them are civilians. Rushdi Abuelov, thank you very much. Well, it's the worst violence in the region for seven years. Tensions have been mounting in Jerusalem throughout the holy month of Ramadan. Our correspondent Caroline Hawley looks at what has sparked this deadly confrontation. The conflict between Israelis and Palestinians hasn't made headlines in recent years, but it's been a tinderbox waiting to explode. The spark, Jerusalem, a city of sacred sites and simmering tensions, the heart of the conflict. And now, with depressing familiarity, it's ignited violence once again. So what's behind the latest escalation? Palestinian anger has been mounting for weeks. There have been clashes over a threat to evict dozens of families from their homes in Israeli-occupied East Jerusalem in favour of Jewish settlers. There's also been trouble between Israeli police and Palestinians infuriated by restrictions on them gathering at the entrance to the Old City at sunset. And then, on the last weekend of Ramadan, came clashes at Al-Aqsa Mosque where Israeli security forces said Palestinians had been throwing stones. On Monday, Israel accused worshippers of preparing to attack a planned march by Israeli hardliners. And troops stormed into the holy compound. Hamas, which rules the Gaza Strip, is now portraying itself as the protector of Jerusalem, the defender of Muslim worshippers. It's called its barrages of rocket fire, Operation Sword of Jerusalem. So why does Jerusalem matter so much? The importance of Jerusalem is perhaps the one thing that the two sides can actually agree on. It has both religious and national significance. The Israelis see it as their eternal undivided capital, while for the Palestinians, they want it, or at least the eastern part of it, as the capital of their future state. But this latest escalation has gone way beyond Jerusalem. It's revived memories of the war in Gaza in 2014, which left more than 2,000 Palestinians and dozens of Israelis dead. That's the last time there was an explosion of violence on this scale. So what's been the international response? One of growing alarm. The UN Secretary General said peace talks were the only way forward and must be revived. Boris Johnson and the Americans urged Israelis and Palestinians to step back from the brink. We believe Palestinians and Israelis equally deserve to live with safety uh, and security. And we'll continue to engage with uh, Israelis, Palestinians, and other regional partners to urge de-escalation and to bring calm. But for now, neither side show the slightest sign of backing down. And as so often, it's civilians on both sides paying the price. Caroline Hawley, BBC News. 
and there's more explanation of what's happening on the BBC News website. That's bbc.co.uk forward slash news.